for my whole life. I didn't know if I even really existed, but I do. And people are starting to notice. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Rated R. Welcome back, everyone. We got a new Joker trailer and Todd Phillips, the director, talking about future potential crossover with other Batman movies. So we'll break it down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Easter eggs. I'll be doing a bunch more Joker videos, Easter eggs and breakdowns as we get closer to the movie coming out and there's special giveaway stuff I'll explain at the end of the video. You notice in this trailer and in the last trailer, there are Easter eggs for Thomas Wayne, Martha Wayne, and Bruce Wayne in a couple iconic scenes from notable Batman origin stories. You see them walking out of the theater during that giant clown riot. You see the Excalibur poster that's right out of Batman v Superman and Zack Snyder's version of the Batman origin story where Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne are murdered. So it's not a spoiler to say that this is obviously the same little boy that's probably Bruce Wayne. There was an earlier trailer where you see him peering through the fence, putting a smile on his little face, making it seem like he's stalking the Waynes and just happens to run into young Bruce Wayne. So in the last week, there were all kinds of theory videos that people were posting about potential for a new origin story for a new version of the Batman because we have Robert Pattinson's Batman coming in the next couple of years. It's supposed to be set during the 90s, so people assume, you know, a younger version of the character, if the Joker movie takes place in the late 70s, early 80s, maybe the timeline could work out like that. But there were a lot of questions because even though the Joker is older than Batman, he's really only like 10 years older than Batman. And in the context of the Joker movie, it seems like the Joaquin Phoenix version of the character is almost 30 years older than this young version of Bruce Wayne. So even though it's really fun to theory craft, if you bend over backwards, you might be able to make it work. But the timeline just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like This version of the Joker is just way too old for what you would need him to be for that version of the Batman. So thankfully, the director, Todd Phillips, came out at an interview in the last couple of days and clarified what's going on with their intentions for this version of the Joker and potential future crossover with other Batman movies. And following uh, Heath Ledger's Joker, um, were you at all reluctant to kind of revisit this like sacred almost ground of a character? Um, no. No, I mean, I love it, and but there was Jared Leto followed it, and I love that too, and Jack Nicholson preceded it, and I love that. It's, uh, it's oddly, um, in the States, comic books are our Shakespeare, it seems, and you can do many, many versions of Hamlet. There will be many more Jokers, I'm sure, in the future. What was your reaction when you saw his full transformation into Joker? Um, it doesn't work like that in, in a movie. It happens in the movie, but I mean, when you're when you're directing it, it, it's a much slower thing. So it was never, it wasn't like an overnight thing. The movie, have you seen the movie? Yeah, no, it's cool. I was because it's a super like slow burn. The transformation isn't like comes out of a closet like Superman. It's it's a sort of slow transformation that happens. There's been a lot of buzz about the Oscars. Is that something in your mind? No, honestly, we just can't believe about the the Venice thing, and we're just coming off that. This is literally the second time we're showing the movie ever. Sorry, so we're just still getting our footing. And Joaquin, um, it, it seems scary good in this movie. It seems like he went super method. Did he ever almost take things too far in your mind, where you're like, oh, whoa, dude, like you're getting no. too dark? No, and he doesn't go. He's not method in it either. He really just comes. He does the part. We say cut, we go over there, we laugh about something. He wasn't like, for, that's not, for this movie, that's not how he had to do it. Robert Pattinson was just cast as Batman. I know this is a totally different movie, but um, but uh, do you see those two worlds merging together anytime soon? No, no. Thank you. definitely not. That was a really great clip of him talking about the movie itself, the character, the history of the Joker character, not being afraid of him, referring to comic books as the American Shakespeare. He is a big comic book fan, but Shakespeare gets reinterpreted and reimagined hundreds of different times, and it doesn't necessarily diminish the earlier works. So he never wrestled with the legacy aspect of the movie or the character. The stuff he worries about is mostly practical stuff. How good is the script? How are we going to shoot this scene? How are we going to handle the release and promote the movie? Did the movie we made convey our thesis on the Joker character? It's a very healthy attitude, but I think a lot of that is just Todd Phillips himself. He's had enough successes as a director that he's so confident in his choices that thinking about all the other versions of the Joker isn't what's keeping him up at night, unless he has some strange fear of clowns that he's not telling us about. 
But when he says there's no chance for his version of the Joaquin Phoenix Joker to cross over with Robert Pattinson's Batman, that's just the way he intended the movie. And Joaquin Phoenix himself isn't known for doing sequels. Remember a couple years ago during that big Marvel Phase 3 announcement? He was in the running for Doctor Strange when Marvel wasn't sure whether or not it'd be able to lock down Benedict Cumberbatch as the character. He turned them down. Joaquin Phoenix said no to Marvel's Doctor Strange because he did not want to sign a five or six picture deal and do a bunch of big franchise movies. So even though the movie has been getting all kinds of good press and the first thing that happens when a comic book movie blows up is that they try to make a sequel to it, it's possible they could always come back for more, but given what Todd Phillips has said, it seems more likely that they would just pick another DC character or Batman villain to do a DC Black Label style film for just like this. There was recently some news about Aaron Sorkin taking a meeting with Warner Brothers about doing a DC Comics movie. So I saw a lot of people in my timeline going crazy at the idea that Aaron Sorkin could do an R-rated Lex Luthor film, just like the Joker. That would be a badass backdoor way to make a new Superman movie. You make it about Lex Luthor and you just involve Superman in it in a roundabout way. There's no way they're ever going to do an R-rated Superman film, but you could do an R-rated Lex Luthor film. Brian Cranston has been everybody's fan cast since way back in Batman v Superman, so it would be awesome to see them try something like that. And they're thinking, who can play Lex Luthor? Who's bald who could be menacing? <laughs> oh! Walter White, we can get that guy in there. The other interesting things that he talks about during this interview too are the way they made the Joker character. So you have Arthur Fleck, that's Joaquin Phoenix through the early parts of the film. Eventually he does transform into the Joker, but I love when he's talking to that interviewer asking about the actual transformation. Were you surprised? Was this a big deal? And he says, no, no, it wasn't like that. The transformation happens in the movie, but it's not like Superman. He doesn't rush into a phone booth as Arthur Fleck, then rush right back out as the Joker. But talk about meta Easter eggs. If you guys didn't know, there was actually a Superboy TV show where Joaquin Phoenix played a version of Superboy. It was a show between 1988 and 1992 on CBS where there was a different villain in every single episode, Joaquin Phoenix playing the Superboy character. The villain of that episode was called Little Hercules. He was trying to blow up a nuclear submarine and Joaquin Phoenix's Superboy had to stop him. The actual process for Joaquin Phoenix during the Joker movie becoming the Joker just took way longer. It was much more drawn out. And when people talk about this movie as a more intense perspective driven film, putting you inside the mind of Arthur Fleck as he's becoming the Joker, there's a lot of really tied up shots. There's a lot of long drawn out scenes where he's figuring out his makeup and his mannerisms, the things he's going to say. Imagine a version of The Dark Knight where you see Heath Ledger's Joker just sitting in his room by himself in between those big action scenes, just putting his makeup on, trying to figure out how things were going to go, looking at his plans. We've never really seen that with previous versions of the character, so that's one of the big differences between the Joaquin Phoenix version of the character and the other Jokers that have come before. Interestingly enough, he also reveals that Joaquin Phoenix did not go method to perform the character. If you're not familiar with acting terms, method acting is when an actor completely tries to inhabit a role and literally be that character for the duration of the shoot 24-7. Normally, when actors film scenes, they'll break character the minute they finish filming a scene. Christian Bale was also another actor that did not go method when he was playing the Batman character during the Dark Knight trilogy. When you hear about people going method to play the Joker, most people are referring to Jared Leto's version, where he literally acted like the character all the time leading up into pre-production when they were actually filming the movie. There were all those stories about him sending really creepy, crazy, disgusting gifts to the other cast members. So most actors are not method just because it's so intense. And if you're trying to go method for the Joker, you literally have to be crazy like the Joker 24 seven. And that would just mess anybody up so much. You would need to go through so much therapy after you finish that movie. Because the movie is coming out in a couple weeks, there'll be a bunch more trailers dropping. I'll do Easter egg videos for all that stuff and talk about the future of the DC black labels, how the Joker movie is changing the way they make DC movies. So let me know in the comments, what is the next DC character you want to see get a really intense spin-off R-rated film? We're doing a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your best Joker theory on the video. Everybody click here for my non-spoilery Joker movie review and click here for that brand new Rick and Morty season four teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.